you have to differentiate every time you talk about negative green between the vertical wave and the horizontal wave. The vertical wave is the most destructive of all of the energy quality bands. It is the shortest, the most penetrating, and the most harmful. That's why in biogeometry we focus on the vertical wave of negative green as an energy quality we need to transmute because we are exposed to much more of it today than we used to be, particularly through our new electromagnetic technologies and the way those electromagnetic technologies are piggybacking on the Earth energy lines, as we'll discuss later. So with the vertical negative green, the French were really fascinated by this discovery because they found that the negative green band in general could penetrate through thicknesses of lead that cannot be penetrated by x-rays. And as they began to investigate the different artifacts from the ancient world, the same as Louis Turin had, but now with the added insight of testing what things have negative green, whether vertical or horizontal wave, they then identified how many times in the ancient world the Egyptians, the Chinese, the residents of Easter Island, and many other cultures actually applied the negative green wave technology for very specific applications. They found that negative green was a carrier wave. In other words, negative green can penetrate straight through solid matter, so it's an optimal carrier wave that can send any other vibrational quality along it. And the negative green then becomes the carrier wave to send that other energy quality wherever you want it to go, straight through physical matter, straight through solid walls. And this is similar to the concept of a carrier wave used today, for example, in modern radio communication. Your AM and FM radio bands have a carrier wave that is then sending the information of a person's voice or the music that you're then tuning into with the crystal in the radio. Same as in radiesthesia, we are tuning with the vibrational tool into a specific vibrational quality as an extension of our energy field. And the negative green fields are what can send energy and information from one place to another place. So this was a major breakthrough, the completion of the energy quality spectrum and the discovery of the most powerful and penetrating of all the energy quality bands, the negative green band, through the work of Chalmeray and de Belazal. Now, to be able to test the entire energy quality spectrum, de Balazal and Chalmeray didn't want to use the tools Turin had because he had 11 different pendulums with 11 different angles built into them, each to detect a specific one of the 11 different parts of the energy quality spectrum that Turin had detected. Now they had, with the discovery of negative green, the complete 12 bands of the spectrum. But they didn't want to have 12 different pendulums, so they figured out ways that they could use one tool to be able to detect all 12 different bands and to be able to, to differentiate in each band whether they were detecting the vertical or the horizontal wave. Now they had more than one tool that could do this, but the one that we still use today in reference in biogeometry is the tool called the virtual cone pendulum. So we're going to spend time in this class teaching you how to use the virtual cone pendulum. And you'll also recall that you are trained in this tool in depth with a lengthy illustrated handout on this tool when you took the live foundation training.